Hello everybody, it's Connie again. So welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're enjoying the series of videos that I have been doing. Um, and so if you haven't watched the other videos, please, please go back and run them up and watch them. So make sure you subscribe and you like if you enjoy and leave me a comment and let me know what you think about um, the video. So today we're going to watch so one of the other series of what am I, how shea butter is locally made in South Sudan so I guess he's on a mission is just to show the entrepreneurs in South Sudan so the last one we saw was an agripreneur it's my new word you know I love it so today it's we're going to see about shea butter so I think if you're African you know what a shea butter is I think most of us use it and so yeah so let's get straight into this video but hey, the main reason why I went to South Sudan was to promote small businesses in South Sudan. You know, South Sudan is actually a young country, so the people in that country who have started business are just young. So all businesses in South Sudan are definitely small businesses, and um, I was so impressed to see what... It looks so yummy, looks like chocolate or something. <laughs> Wow. Young people are doing to change the narratives of their own country. So hey, do me a favor, like the video, share and subscribe as we talk. Please do. Do the same thing. Like the video, share and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. So, you know, we're on a mission. Help me reach the 1000 mark and I will be so grateful. So it can, you know, encourage me, you know, to post more videos and to do more reaction videos. And make sure you also let me know if you'd like me to do a reaction videos to any of any African youtuber that you like and follow and then just help me discover more African youtubers talk to the youngest CEO who decided to establish a chef butter business in the country if I didn't come to this country like I will think that it's only Ghana that makes Oh, she's a lady oh wow Ooh, I love this oh my goodness it's another woman entrepreneur this is so good okay well now you know better I also thought that in the first place really yeah but we do have plenty of shea butter and plenty of shea trees it's just that sometimes the preparation styles differ. oh okay yeah so like you make everything in here yes from scratch all we do is to import, I mean, bring the nuts from the Lakes region, which is where we get our name. But is it also in... Um, your, yes, in South Sudan. Sudan. Yes, the Lakes region is in Bahar Ghazal. So where the Nile crosses South Sudan. And then we bring everything here and do the production all the way here. Wow. Yeah. Who are the people who does the production? Well, currently I use the wives of soldiers because in South Sudan, wives are usually housewives. And they, they have... You know, and sh another lady who is empowering the women. This is exactly what I love. You give to a woman, she takes it back to the family. Simple. Simple. I love this. I mean, you're creating employment. You're empowering another person who in turn will educate the children, who in turn will become important people in the society, who in turn will educate children and so on. So... It's a beautiful circle that, you know, will, you know, benefit everybody, actually. So, wow. Okay. But the ones that usually work. And salaries don't, don't always come. So, now, in this area, soldiers live here. So, I just use their wives and bring in the little storage facilities there. Oh, that's inspirational. But, let me know. My name is Maya. You never told me your name. My name is Estella. Estella. Yeah. Born and raised in Juba. Yes. No, born, not born and raised in Juba. I was born here and then moved to the East Africa, of course, during the crisis. Okay. Uh, so I moved to East Africa, did part of my education in East Africa, okay. and then moved on to my bachelor in Malaysia, okay. and then my master's in China, and then I came back here. You went to China? Yeah, I did. I was also based in China, you know that? Yeah. Do you speak Chinese? No. Basic Chinese, like Basic Ni Hao. Ni Hao. How to get some food. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And, um why you have to come back here you should have stayed in malaysia or china well first of all this is home there's no feeling like just being home okay you know? uh, i remember that whenever i'd come back from either china or or you know malaysia just there's that feeling at the airport that you feel like i'm gonna go back home because when i come back i don't necessarily come directly to south sudan because we don't have flights that come in here 
I would come to maybe Uganda or Kenya and then transit. Oh, okay. But that just that feeling of being in Africa and just being home was amazing. And I don't think there's anything that means that. And um, what really inspired you to start a Shebara company? So aside from me using the Shea Butter myself, because I hope she has like an online boutique. I would like to check it out. You know it. It's nice to know that it's handmade by the locals and stuff and stuff and it must be of top quality. So, well, let me know in the comments below if you know if she has an online boutique. Because previously I used to get it from Northern Uganda and I used to take it to school with me and whenever I would finish, I would just send for more. And then I came back here and one time I asked my grandfather to smell the shea butter that I had and he said this was shea butter, but then I had seen it here before. The difference was in preparation styles. The one that they used to prepare here, they would darken, roast too much, and then it would become dark. Mm. And even the smell was a bit too too much to use on your skin. Okay. And so um, I had some, you know, looked on YouTube, and then I was able to see how it was prepared. I got one lady at that time that was able to do the pounding and the grinding for me, and then they got out some oil for me, and it was perfect. So I started using it myself. I'd give it to gifts. Uh, to my friends as gifts, my family as gifts, and then slowly when I saw that everybody, I mean people slowly liked it, and then we, we moved on to producing it at Lightscape. So which means you redefined the use of Shebara in South Sudan? I think I did, I think I did, because now we have, we have a bunch of companies that are actually dealing in Shea Butter. I'm not sure if they produce here, but I know that there's people that are actually into Shea Butter now. I mean, can you take us around a little bit um, where you can Keep your nuts and uh, yes, 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 yes. So this is our little village. I don't yeah. know if it works the well. As, village, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it works well as the village you yeah, used to. Yeah. But this is our little village. Okay. So partly the women live in some of these um, tuples. We call them tuples. Okay. And then this is our working space. Okay. Yeah. So this is our working space, and this is the machine that we use oh okay for, well, maybe making the work easier yes because before they used to pound and grind we do have the motor in there they used to pound and grind but then it's too much work and they also do not produce so much in a day mm. so when the demand grew we saw it was better for them to have a machine because then they are able to produce efficiently without you know being tired the whole day so yeah that's pretty much it so come with me so because the space is a little small and we're a growing little company, we saw our water here and then we just use the space for most of the work. Uh, here are the nuts. So these are nuts. And just looking at the walls and the cracks on the walls, I'm like, oh my goodness, it must be so hot for the walls to crack up like that. But on the other hand, I think that it makes, you know, just using you know soil i think it's cow dung in this case but when you use it soil or cow dung it actually cools the house so it's not as hot as you know when you're outside so wow but it must be very hot nuts that have sort of already been sorted and dried and we just keep them here they have a very good shelf life so we don't have to worry about uh, whether or not they're going to get spoiled as long as it's properly dried then it's fine now these are the nuts that have not yet been shelved this is the process before you get to this so this is the seed that's inside the fruit when you get the fruit it's green then you eat the fruit then this comes out this is dried and then shelved because if you can see there is um so if you hit this a little bit i'll just maybe yeah so that from that that's the nut Whoa. that is this we have a, a, a share fruit yes there's a fruit it's green in color we don't have it here because they also have a very low shelf life oh i didn't know that i i thought that you were you you actually just take the you know the seed you know from i didn't know there was a sheer fruit i have to i have to check okay interesting as soon as it's plucked from the tree you must almost eat it instantly if you don't then it doesn't pluck. oh i want that shirt pan-african lifestyle oh that's really nice okay oh i like that 
But is it difficult to get this nuts in here? No, actually no, because God has blessed us, they grow by themselves. You don't have to water them, nobody plants them, they just grow. So they mainly grow in South Sudan, they mainly grow in the lakes region, mm. which is around where and uh, in some parts of the equatorial mm. but i source this from the lakes yeah and then so we store partly the nuts here and also some of our produce here now the way that this uh, structure is made the mud because south sudan is hot, it's very hot it helps us keep the the butter in shape because if you put it outside right now it could it could literally uh, melt all right yeah exactly what i said exactly what i said all right so yeah that makes sense um let's just take you through you can even tell that this has been produced a while ago but because of the heat you can tell that it's it just you can if you can look here the oil is coming up because of the heat can i touch it yeah now this came from a fridge so you can see that it's a bit harder than, oh, yeah. than that yeah, that was stored uh that was solidified naturally yeah so then we move from here we have the preparation so this is mainly like the storage room where we keep stuff we keep our utensils and then the women do the preparation outside because of the heat of the fire we would rather they stay and cook in a place that they can get some air conditioning yeah so they this machine because of the way why does it look so much like chocolate? <laughs> oh my goodness, it looks like chocolate. Mm. That uh, it works, if you can tell, it has already made holes. So this cannot be put inside because of its movement. Exactly. And also it needs to constantly be watered so that it stays cool and it's able to do the production easily. Uh, so yeah, this is chill spot and the cooking area. Okay, yeah, now we have some of the butter, some of the nuts that have been roasted and grinded. Now these are ready to be put into the boiling process, which is where you get to extract the oil. To boil them? Yeah, you have to boil the pest in order to get the oil. How done. long? Oh, it takes about an hour, an hour 30 minutes for the oil to start coming on top. And then you can already start putting. Don't burn yourself, what am I? At this point, don't touch anything, okay? Don't get burnt. Okay. Yes, so the water has to be really hot. It has to be it has really boiled. Then they'll start putting in the paste. And you can see we basically use sticks because we want something longer. Because once it starts boiling, it starts to, what is it called? Do they, do they call it bubbling? Yeah. I don't know. It starts to bubble up and, and yeah, like that. And then it could easily get on the skin. So they'll do that for another hour or so until the oil starts coming on top. Yeah, once the oil... Guys, wow. Do you, I'm I'm sorry I'm not speaking too much right now because I love what I'm seeing and I'm learning so much. So if I understand the process, you have the nuts, you break the nuts, so you get the seed inside, and then you roast it first, and then you grind the nut, and now they have a machine to actually grind the nut, and then they boil it. Uh, the, they put the paste in water and then boil it and just turn and turn and turn for one and a half hours. And then the oil, you know, resurfaces actually. And then you, they store it and then you have sheer butter. As simple as that. S so natural, you know, it's just something good for the skin. <gasps> wow, I wish she has a boutique. I would like to buy myself that. Let's come on top. I did learn a kufsha. Let's see kufsha. Let's check it out. This is so hot, like it is. It is. So just imagine if we had to produce this inside. Yeah, yeah it would be crazy. You actually creating employment. Yes, I would I'd love to to think that that's what I do. So here, here we have eight women because uh, first we started with two about two women. 
and then we moved on to eight women because the demand was slowly growing. Okay. The, the locals were slowly trying to understand the importance of shea butter and all the benefits that it has. So we moved on to eight women here, but we have about 32 women in the lakes region that actually do the collection of the mats, and then we go ship them in here. So now from that, once the oil has you know, come to the top, the contents that are go to the bottom, the residue basically goes to the bottom. And this is what the oil looks like. This is shea butter oil? Yeah, this is shea butter oil. When it's hot, there's something about shea butter oil. When it's hot, it's a bit darkish. Once it cools down, because... Yeah, it looks like castor oil, you know, like, looks like castor oil there's still residue that gets to the bottom then it clears out it becomes <laughs> yes yes once it's solidified it becomes yellow is it like the, the red shepherd in the north part of ghana i've yeah. never seen one before this is my first time seeing this in south sudan yeah. it's like a village of mine <laughs> you're probably in a village that doesn't produce it yeah but that's uh, pretty much it so we do have a storage on the other side uh, where we do the the final packaging and the production and we'll probably go there uh, now this we put some hot uh, because we put it in the fridge so it solidified and it became hard that you could not scoop it we put some hot oil on it too yes yeah. but this, do you sell this this we sell at 4500 which should be the equivalent of eight dollars do you ship it abroad we haven't started shipping abroad. oh that's a pity you should you should for real because so many people are turning to natural products and now that you know we see how it's made i want one i want Rod, one. but we're working on that currently because we're now dealing with uh, our standards the getting the document from the bureau of standards once we get that we'll be able to ship it out okay, that's yeah. Yeah. Wow. so that is in the lemongrass flavor Make different flavors okay everything is made here yes the only thing that we get from abroad is the packaging because obviously we do not have factories in south sudan yet that are able to produce for us uh, uh, such packages and yeah do you think um, it's worth it to invest in such a business more than you can imagine first and foremost the satisfaction that comes from knowing that you're changing lives you know even if in a small scale but you're changing lives somehow because these are people that are used to being housewives if they're able to make the little for themselves when a woman makes money most of it goes back to the family so she's right that's exactly what i said when a woman makes money it goes back to the family and more so um, in in Africa and and I think it's it's beautiful because it's just and you empower a woman you're empowering a community as a whole so yeah she's right she's right I feel like it is it's perfect and we could do better if you can maybe you can just just have a look at, at it quickly uh, you can already see the oils are coming to the top yeah if you can maybe let's just get a scoop. It's like a peanut butter. Yes, it becomes like a peanut butter. So you can see that what's on top is the oils. Besides the residue, now that's what gets off once it's cooled down. The oil has already started coming. We haven't even been 30 minutes into the cooking. Okay. But the longer it takes, the more the oils are maximized. But they have to constantly keep stirring because if they don't stir, you have to be very careful. Be very careful because yeah, it's very hot. Yeah. Yeah, so they have to constantly stir it because if they don't stir, are you gonna? <laughs> I knew he was, something was cooking. I knew he was about to do something silly. <laughs> You're like, what is wrong with this guy? I was, I was, I was, I was, I was afraid for your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So they constantly stir it because if they don't then uh it holds the fire and obviously you start producing butter that smells burnt oh. yeah i mean what was the major challenge establishing this year in Pasadena? well the major ch now for me the major challenge was uh the finances because i financed this individually so it became 
a bit complicated. If my pocket is empty, then I cannot facilitate this. The other would be in regards to the logistics, uh, bringing the nuts from the lake states all the way till here, because sometimes in the rainy season, the roads are flooded. It makes it almost very difficult. You know, the infrastructure, I mean, if the infrastructure is horrible, especially in Africa, and you need to tr to go from point A to point B, it can take hours because you're stuck in the mud. You have to push the truck. And so if one car is stuck in the mud, it means the whole, you know, the whole ro road is blocked and all the other cars, the same thing, you know. So, yeah, it can be a terrible thing. So I think it must be a big challenge um, for her. That when I have to transport them, I have to pay double the price or triple the price that I would use to get the nuts. So, yeah, that's one of the challenges. But other than that, I think it's it's been smooth because, first of all, these women are used to doing the work anyway they're used to making the shea butter so it's not a new thing for them okay. it's not a new thing it's just the technique that's different from what they're used to making yeah but that's yeah. pretty I mean, much yeah, it yeah, even reducing stress you know because they used to pound everything with yes yes i actually haven't showed you the mortar but uh they used to use the stone so they used to use the stone to grind the stone yeah now that, that's how they do it locally so this has replaced the stones and the the i think it's called the mortar and pestle here we call it dong and this is murkaka yeah there's the mortar so we haven't used it in in almost forever and that's when they do it like one you have like two people just going back and forth back and forth um, and then after that grinding it, you know, on the stone and wow, so she has really changed so, so many and ways of doing and making it easier for them and wow, so good job, young lady. <laughs> Yeah, they used to grind it manually. So just imagine the amount of time that they need to be able to produce shea butter. So before, when they used to manually do the process, they used to take, I think they produce about 10 liters in a day. 10 liters after working the whole day. But now they're able to produce about 20, 40 liters in a day because we do not want to to produce. Kalim, uh, ayada, kalida, bus was a blunt feeder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's okay. Give me this one. Just see, these are the kind of thing that put it in. Kubu, kubu, have a Wow. So it's, to take the whole day to just. Uh, well, no, ayada, the catch up time. So there's a technique that, that we used to make here when the women are making because if you make alone your hands get tired fast but then they have a, a take exactly yeah they need to be two and they pound in one after another back and forth. Nick where? Can you are you I think we have to show you first. Please don't so what's the look? So when you do two people you're not maximizing too much of energy on one person and it's and you're speeding the process. They usually do faster than that, but... Yeah, from here, where's the page? From here, because this doesn't do... Yeah, it's okay. it doesn't it doesn't grind it to be fine and when it's not finely grinded no that 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 is still very much very? What, yeah it's still very much it you're supposed to take some time grinding yeah pounding it and then when I get person then they put the paste here and start to grind it yeah after that they still move on to the process so the oils are coming we're starting to maximize the oils now. Okay. You can let me, already. Let me, let me let me ask you. Yeah. Yes. We've got so many um, South Sudanese that live in the diaspora. Yes. That I feel like it's time for them to come back and be part of the chain that we're looking for on the continent. Yeah. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? I would say that first of all, we are a country that is blessed with a vast number of resources, of natural resources. Okay. And there's so much that we can do with it. We cannot all do white collar jobs. I mean, uh, there's too much for us to do that is not involved in the office because you're, causing, you're creating employment even for people that 
and not so educated and yeah bring it good for the country so there's so much that we can do we should just change our mindset of thinking that everything involves is around the office and definitely you have a message for young africans yes for younger africans as africans we should stop glorifying the idea that everything good comes from out because we have so many things in here that i mean most of the west gets stuff from here like we 100 percent 100 percent so that's why africa is self-sufficient and i think you know people should stop just depending on importation and we have everything we have everything in africa we're self-sufficient so we should definitely change the mindset and yeah and things will just pave way to new things into developing africa as a, as a whole like the pan-african lifestyle should be it's a whole vibe you know it's a whole vibe we export shea butter to most of these european countries so there's too much that we can do here to benefit ourselves and also do the greater good for our nation our continent as a whole so. I, I, I want to say thank you so much for talking to me but uh, i think i need to do this to help you yeah. um i know you don't export right now but can you do me a favor because i have a whole army who, okay. who are willing i don't think you'll even be able to produce okay if they ask you for sheba if the demand is there we can definitely produce we have thank too you. many women so will you like um do me a favor tell us how do people find you so that they'll be able to reach out to you so our social media handles are aram aram slug underscore where uh, I think you'll have to write that. Right. Aram underscore where on both Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can just find us there. We're working on our website as well. It's aramware dot All right. I want to thank you so much for talking. Thank to you me. for coming and thank you for you know being around. Hey, the oil is not hot yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. So thank you so much, everybody. So we've seen another young lady who's doing great thing in South Sudan. She's so outspoken again, intelligent. She's changing the narrative. She's changing lives and she's creating impact in her community. So thank you so much for watching. So once again, if you like this video, if you enjoyed the video, make sure, you know, you subscribe, like and comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye.